Progress on this project is brought to you by Social Distancing. So if you've been with my channel for an extended amount of time, you may have noticed that I started working on a project about two years ago and then suddenly stopped. Either that or maybe maybe you went to my channel and my, my uploads and were scrolling through and noticed that there was a group of videos about a lathe that I was, I was converting and then suddenly stopped. Well, all that's due to a lot of personal stuff, honestly. Having kids, getting a new job, moving a couple of times. All normal stuff people deal with, but because of that, you know, of course, projects get put on hold or put on the back burner. And this one has always been nagging me in the back of my head to, to get complete. So with that, and the fortunate situation of social distancing, I'm here to show some progress again. I've gotten back onto it, and I've, I've made some, a lot of progress, and I want to share it with you guys. So with that, what... What are the components that are in this design? I wanted to go over those first before I show you, you know, them actually on the machine, just so we can all understand what the components are. And then, hey, if you guys have any feedback, let me know, and then I can update or modify or even share some more if needed. So there's a total of eight unique components. Um, some of them, some of which have duplicates, like the say the motor mount, because um, there's there's two of those. So the first component is my motor mount. This allows me to mount my stepper motor to each of the axes. It allows inside of it the connection or the joint of the motor to the ball screw or lead screw. And it gives you area to be able to screw on, you know, whether it's set screws or bolts for the say, love joy connection between the, the two components. This also allowed me to, no matter what axis I was working on, I can just take one of these motor mounts and just mount it up and it would fit. The second component that I made is what I'm calling the main ball screw support block. There's only one of these, and its use is to be able to mount to the standard mounting locations on the machine over on the tailstock side. And it holds the, the double angular contact bearings that were originally found in the ball screw mounting blocks that I got and allows the, the attachment of my motor mount. You can see how on the back side, my motor mount fits right over that, that circle, that, that, uh, that radius, and enables to, allows it to mount directly to it. One thing to note is that there's room for a seal here, similar to what you would see on the ball screw mounts that come with the ball screws. But I haven't decided if I want to do that, or maybe possibly have bellows on the outside or some other way of protecting the ball screw or the bearings from chips or other contaminants. The third component that I made was the end ball screw support block. There's only one of these, and this basically goes on the end of the ball screw down to where the motor was and allows the, the ball screw to go and float in there. And what you see now is my extended version, You know, thanks, thanks to the, the pull push feature and fusion, because the, the ball screw that I have now is a little too short for my latest design. And so I basically just extruded out the side face of the bracket to allow the my current ball screw to fit. My future design is gonna be able to use a longer ball screw, but chop this down to a manageable thickness. Number four, this is the X-axis mount. This basically mounts directly onto the carriage on the side of the machine and it uses the existing mounting points and is is actually really closely shaped to what was already on there um, for the mounting and, and holding that, that lead screw in there, but allows me to attach my standard motor mount to it, as well as allow you know all the functional features as far as letting this lead screw in and being able to mount stuff to it. Number five, this is what I'm calling the ball screw nut mounting block. And this connects to the, the ball screw nut, as you may have guessed, and allows it to connect up to the, the carriage. This uses the existing mounting points on the ball screw nut, which currently is a, a 16 millimeter ball screw, and has mounting points to go to another component I designed, the carriage support bar. And so with that, 
talking about the, the carriage support bar, that is number six on my list of components that I designed. And this allows me to connect the ball screw mounting block to the actual carriage. So you can see the two center holes mount to the ball nut mount and then the two outside holes allow it to connect to the actual X carriage. And again, this, this uses the ex existing mounting points to help eliminate any need to modify the machine or help reduce any modifications needed to mount this to the machine. Number seven, this is the limit switch mount. This is something I was actually really excited to do because I kept looking at this and wanted to do something like this to be able to mount directly on the Z axis and be able to be like an easy one-handed, you know, change or thing I could do to either what is you want to move the limit switch around or just mount it up easily. There's two of these total on the Z axis, one of course for the minimum and one for the maximum. And it allows the limit switches to attach directly to the Z axis and was designed to be as minimal as possible as well as be easily to you know mount onto the machine. For a future design I might think about using a proximity sensor. So I might make a modification to this design or have a different configuration to where a prox proximity sensor could be used instead of the, the standard mechanical limit switch. And number eight, this is the last component that I've designed. I actually haven't, this is the only one that I haven't made yet. And this is the anti-backlash nut. This is for the x-axis. Uh, of course, there's, there's only one of these and it's to match the the standard pitch on the screw that's on the machine but allow there to be an adjustment for any backlash. This was designed this way to help reduce any cost of, of this kit or to, to be able to convert this. I do plan to hopefully look at you know smaller ball screws to be able to put in here or acne screw or something else as more precision but I did design this first to help keep this project going and then learn from it or even get any feedback from anybody because I was thinking about doing some, some beta units or selling this. So with that, that covers the components that I have designed so far. Let's go over to the machine now and we can see it's actually mounted and, and moving around. Well, here we are. We got all the things printed out and mounted on the machine. Let's get this guy out of the way. This is the front cover that previously had the switches and the potentiometer on there. We'll just go put this over here. Oh, yeah. With all the other parts that I've taken off the machine. But if we go back here, I can take this guy off. That's just sitting on there. You can go down here and you can see, switch the camera up. This is the ball screw holder. You can see where I marked it off. This is how much I had to extend it out so my shorter ball screw would fit. This is actually how thick it's actually going to be when I get a longer ball screw. But you can see here there's a a bearing in there. That was that was super fun to try and press into plastic or even just try and design it to where you know that plastic would would be able to hold or be a ever so slight tight fit for the bearings. Um, I also got the double angle contact bearings in here that came with, where are they? These guys. So that, this guy's empty if you can't see in there. But we got the, the end of the ball screw holder. We got the, the main bearing block or ball screw holder. That's where the seal's gonna be hopefully or some sealing method that I, I choose. Got the standard motor mount that I made. And over here on the X too. You can see here, I, I printed out the, the X uh, mount as well as the motor mount all together as one. I really just did that to make it easier to print and then just assemble so I wouldn't have to worry about bolting things together. I could just print it out as one thing and test fit it. Also, if we go over here too, you can see the, the ball nut bracket or block. 
and then that little intermediate block that goes up underneath it that connects this guy to that. And then if we go to the top side, you can see that we use the standard um, bolt holes to connect to. Again, over there we got we're using the standard bolt holes, and over there the standard bolt holes for everything. So the, really, the, the intent with this was just to be able to take all the manual components off, be able to use the existing mounting holes, not have to modify everything, and then be able to mount stuff on it to allow you to have you know CNC capability. And I'm, I'm hopeful that with this kind of method of using, you know, these are really the only two points that contact the machine in this kind of design that it might be useful on the other machines that might be, you know, bigger than this. So if you had a bigger machine, those might still work. You just need a longer ball screw in between uh, your your points. Oh, and we also got the the limit switch. I was totally nerding out on this while I was making it. And I'm doing this one-handed, but basically, there it is. Hooks onto the, the rail. I'm gonna get a good angle of it. Just sits right on those surfaces, kind of like sits right in it. And that bolt just tightens it up and just seats it right on that rail. You can see here too, I made it to where the limit switch, the bolt holes are here on this side and on this side you can see the bolt holes are over here so I made it kind of a standardized thing on the back side you can see there's you can't see the top holes but the bottom holes there's four holes total that way you can mount the the uh, limit switch over here or flip it around and put it over here and I would love to turn the, the spindle on for you guys, but through all my moving and not working on this, I went to go turn it on the other day and it didn't run. It wouldn't turn on. And so I pulled the board. This is the board that actually comes with the machine. And it normally sits, I think, up in here. But I looked at it and on the back side, where is it? I'll try and mark it on the screen, but right there in the middle, there's a little bit of, I'll say, char. I don't know how, you, how in focus that is for you guys. And then I was looking some more, and if I flip this around, I don't know if you guys can see it, but on R25 and 26, those resistors right here, there's some slight discoloration. I don't know if there's any, like a short in there. But I, I'm suspecting that there was may, maybe a short in here, or it was grounded somehow. But I guess that this this brings up a good point to where after I found that out in the past couple of days, I've been researching online to try and figure out is this something that I can repair? Do I need to replace it? And I found a guy on actually Facebook. He has a, his own little um, Facebook page. He actually repairs these boards because these boards are actually discontinued. They're, they're no longer made. And it made me stop and think and think, is this something that I want to continue using? Because in the future, if I need to replace this or I have any other issues and it's discontinued, well, how am I going to replace it? Or how, how am I going to you know, have a machine that runs? So I've been thinking about whether or not I want to get some other commercially available solution. Um, and if you guys have any solutions or if anyone else has dealt with this a dc controller um for their lathe i'm all ears on on what to use uh doing some some troubleshooting too i found out that I, it was most likely this that's no longer good the motor is still good and you can see here i got two leads i just made up some leads here and they go around to this little power supply i got and if i turn it on you'll see that the motor turns on i'm gonna turn up the voltage It only goes up to, what is it, 12 volts? But motor works. It's just my my control board that controls it doesn't work. So 
right now in Mach 3, I can't, I can't do anything with that. But what I can do, and I'll show you guys, I can go over here, use the arrow keys. I can show you guys it moving. We've got the Z axis and the X axis. I might need to do some, some tuning on the actual steps, but things are actually moving. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it. I got I got some small little design things I need to update, like bolt hole patterns. It's slightly off on this mount on the machine. Um, I still got to make the the nut for this this lead screw and some more onesie twosie stuff. But uh, I at least wanted to show you guys this because I know it's been a while, and I thought you know you guys might enjoy that. So once I get the board situation figured out, I want to get this thing running. I might do a little small test cut on here. Um, I think I actually might use the 3D printed brackets and run it. They actually, I, I had a, a pretty big infill or small infill. I guess it's it's really full as far as the, the inside 3D printed parts. Um, so it, it should be pretty stout or at least for some light cuts. Uh, if, if if they break, oh, oh well, I'll uh, I'll make them out of aluminum because that's that's the plan. Once we get things running and working, I'm gonna make all of these brackets out of aluminum. And yeah, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below or even leave comments on on what you think about this. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like. Or if it deserved it uh, and you like this kind of nerdy wiring electronics cnc stuff um consider subscribing so with that hope you guys enjoyed this video look forward to working on this some more um also making some other videos related to this also not related to this but you know hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys in the next one